These days, Padilla has a great selection of dining choices, but when it comes to Italian food, there's one place that stands out in the crowd, Toscana. Now, why is this place so special? Well, come inside with me and I'll show you. Thailand's beachside destination of Pattaya is today home to some great restaurants. And when it comes to Italian food, it's hard to beat Trattoria Toscana and Pizzeria on the north end of Beach Road. The Leaning Tower of Pisa marks the entrance and the aromas are guaranteed to lead you straight inside. Restaurateur and master chef Luca Marchetti is from the heart of Tuscany. That region of Italy and its capital Florence gave the world Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Galileo and Botticelli to name a few. And it's a place that has inspired some of the world's greatest recipes. It's little wonder then that this large and elegant Italian restaurant won the Tatler Best Restaurant Award for 2008. You can also have Thai and European cuisine here, but it's the pastas, pizzas and top wine selection that makes Toscana's Italian fare a huge hit with both locals and visitors. You know, I always say that um, uh, cooking or the taste, that was, I would say taste, huh? it's like a language. You learn, you speak English very good because they teach you when you was a kid. Now, if you got the taste, it's because when you are, you are a kid, you got the taste from your, uh, your mother, your mother, your auntie, yeah. and, and you got the taste. And then, you know, if you have the taste, probably you can cook some too, right? So there's, uh, and that's why I, I try to keep this, this style and very simple in my restaurant with some, uh, some special, not really special, but let's say a long time recipe like yes. for, for my rabbit, for my white board, my duck and everything. Yes, I do so this. You, you make your own bread? Yes, we do make our bread here, uh, our pastry oh, and yeah. ice cream. Your ice cream? And, yes, and my ice cream. And your own yes. pasta? And my own pasta, definitely. Wow. Yes. The restaurant's extra virgin oils, cheese, salamis and smoked hams are imported from Italy to give each dish that authentic taste. But behind the scenes, the daily fresh-made pasta shows the attention to detail that goes into Luca's menus. Yeah. Are these your own eggs from yes. your farm? Yes, uh, yes, the eggs from my farm, yes. I, I do because is, um, I said this is uh, duck eggs, duck eggs. and uh, chicken eggs. Right. And if you look, is all the color difference and difference also the shape. Uh, if you go in the market, you can't find this one yes. because it's all the same color, same shape. Okay, having the bronze here, it does give this kind of shape to the pasta. It gives a little ridge. That uh, when it's cooked, you don't see. Mm. But uh, it's a very, very small uh, scratch in the pasta that really take the sauce into the pasta. Ah. It keeps the sauce. You see, this kind of stuff. As Lucas said, it's the fresh duck eggs that make the difference. Now when Luca's menu at Toscana says ingredients fresh from the farm, he's not kidding. This is one of Luca's farms outside Patia, where he not only collects the eggs each day, but also breeds the birds, chickens, ducks, and other feathered creatures that feature on his diverse menu. So there you go, there's a quail. Luca produces his own quail eggs. Hello. And the, the quail, like typically, how long? It's it's a tiny chick. Yes, it's it? this size, a small and, one. And Actually, these are fully grown now. So how how old would they be? How many months? After three months, they start to already That's make it. eggs. Wow. Yes, very fast, very fast. They go very fast. And, and is uh, there a big demand for quail eggs? Oh, uh, not really. But because people they don't know, or probably they don't, they get annoyed to break it, or, yeah. you know, <laughs> or take off the shell, because. Actually, the quail eggs, <coughs> they are much less in cholesterol, they are very good cholesterol, high in protein, high in vitamin also. Much, really? yeah, much better than chicken, and much better than, uh, than uh, I say, ducks. 
Wow. Yes. You can have as much you want. Well, this lot is a lot quieter than the geese, so we've got ducks here, yeah? Yes, ducks. They, they, those ones, they're very nice because they don't talk too much. No, <laughs> no they're no, very no. quiet. We call them muta, you know what I mean? Muta. Uh, yes, they don't, so, uh, they don't talk. What's the best way to cook these ones, the white ones? Uh, well, you can do roasted or stew. Uh, roasted or stew is the best way to do it. We can yeah. pick it off the breast and uh, we can uh, preserve the breast and make a kind of uh, ham out of of the breast and the legs too. Sausage. Wow. I make sausage at the restaurant. Sorry, duck. <laughs> same, uh, same breed, same race of chicken, but different size and different color because they eat different. They choose what they, what they want and they can walk. So according to what they eat and, what, uh, and how much they walk, they can have a different kind of shape of, of uh, eggs and different kind of color of the shell, as you see. <laughs> so what are these funny looking birds? Okay. Uh, this one, uh, we should make a, a bet. Which one is female, which one is male? Difficult, I tell you, difficult for me also. But we can get very close they every look time. The same. <laughs> they look the same, yes. This is, we call it in Italy, we call it Faraona. And uh, uh, in English, it should be Guinea hen, Guinea hen, or Guinea fowl, Guinea fowl, uh, something like that. Originally, this animal is coming from Namibia which is uh, Egypt area and uh, there was uh, I mean uh, going wild but then the people are domesticated and uh, until to bring them to now and also there's the eggs of this one I don't use for pasta or for pastry I use only for reproduce, reproduce you know more animal because I it's a good bite I tell you and uh, many people fence pheasant has a good meat right Fancy meat, you know, feather, but this one for me tastes much better. As these ones, you see the pheasant. These are pheasants. Yeah, we got They're two, pretty. Two, pretty two, pretty two, two different, two different breeds. Pheasant is coming uh, from China, actually. Yeah, they're pheasant with a white collar. Yeah. Yes, it's an Asian animal. <laughs> I have been introduced to Europe also for sport, you know, for the shooting, yeah. right? And, uh, and the other one, the the, 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 the light one, one, yeah, the light color one, they are female. Right. The the male is always more colorful, as you see so that the one. So the female looks very yes. plain, ordinary. Correct. Ordinary also because look, she when she etch, right? It's correct. I mean, when you stay on top of the eggs, she has to. Uh, mix up with the color of the grass. Yeah. Uh, and uh, hey, exactly. Mm. You know, so no other predator can can see. Well, right? these guys are very showy. Oh, of course, because yeah. they, have to, they have to show off. Yeah, they do. Very strong. Okay, we catch. <laughs> <laughs> You see, you see the color, beautiful. You'll also find this recognizable bird here. I couldn't resist talking turkey. Hello, turkey! Hello! Hello! They're talking! On another site, Luca has a number of incubators to ensure a continuous supply of birds.
This farm is also home to a variety of pigeons. Come in, check out the pigeons. Here. Roast again, uh, still uh, in, the, in the pan together with the uh, red wine and excellent. But now, uh, the, the way that it looks more weird, but for me the best, is to, in small pieces, a young pigeon which start to fly and uh, fry. Fry with the and around, you know, not just the fry and putting the oil, just um, how do you say, eggs and flour together, um, dip the piece of pigeon inside and then fry. In the, the pans have to be steel, uh, iron, right? Iron pan, you know, which is uh, very slow and they cook up to inside. Very nice, easily bite, it's already cut, right? And beautiful. For me, it's the best way to cook pigeon. When you know where it all comes from and the effort it takes to get good food to your table, then it's truly appreciated and that makes the dining experience at Toscana a special and memorable affair.